applause for the wonderful Deborah Stevenson. Yeah. Hi. I'm Jo, Magpie McCleary. And before I tell you anything, I need to let you know, you can't trust anything I say. Okay? <laughs> When I was seven, I thought my life in Nottingham was awesome. None of the other kids at school had more brothers and sisters than they could count, or a climbing frame in their yard, or school shorts that had been worn by one trillion kids before them. My shorts were so big an elephant could have fit in them. My shorts had lived many lives. The surnames of previous owners written inside with Byro. At night, I'd read the inside like a Bible. It made my story seem simple. I could read the past of people that lived in homes like mine. I lived in a children's home where we called the manager Mother. Mother had mandarin coloured hair which spun what seemed like miles from her pale head in every direction. Mum had a wavy body and when she sang, she sounded like a goose. <laughs> At night, she'd laugh me and the other children into a wriggly sleep. Every night, the same song. you do if you were dragged to this beautiful pile of rocks called Bindoon? What could you do but stare up the nose of doom and feel the worry of we welling in your shoe? I've needed to go for hours, too scared to ask. I'm scared. There's no bunk beds here, just stone, too stiff for dreaming. I'm 13 now. I'm working from 6am till midnight 
Makes it hard to remember or trust anything. That's why you can't trust me. I've tried to tell the other boys the pieces I can remember. But Brother Doom and Brother Gash say my head will burst with my stories one day. I'm scared. As I lie on the stone, trying to remember the one day my memory has chosen when a long man appeared in my kitchen drinking the last of the sugar he penned together my future with ink, paper and a ruler his knees poked out from the tablecloth on each side and his trousers barely stretched past his thighs I could smell his boot polish and mud I can't believe she didn't ask him to take off his shoes. And she offered him my baked beans as if he could choose. I could see his vastly nasty map as I hid in the coat rack in the smell of damp. But I trusted my mum beside him. My real mum, I had one. Her body, a hug, her voice, a cannon, her, her ridiculous dances, she'd swing with the vacuum. She tapped her thumb against her mug. I could tell her fingers were thinking. I think she could hear my fingers thinking. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't drink. I don't, I don't eat cornflakes without sugar. <laughs> <laughs> the long man stopped and stared at me, his voice deep and warm as a bath. Would you like to go to a golden place? Where the sun is bigger and brighter than your face. Where oranges are sweet as sherbet. And kangaroos fit in your pocket. You have no bags and you need no profit. In my silent excitement, he became impatient. There are no beans on the stove. No coats on the hanger. And the mum beside me, you think that you address, has long abandoned you for a deeper rest. The smell of beans shot down the mouse hole. The image of my mother beside him spread wide like the steam from a kettle. Motherless wallpaper shot down the hall and the smell of the orphanage wedged up my nostrils. The long man had one last thing to say, handing me a map and urging me to pray. Joe, this is the only luck you have been given. Look up to the Lord and your mother in heaven. Follow me and your friends to this boat of citrus. This is the closest you will come to forgiveness. My memory's broken. As the older boys shout, You're a joke! An idiot! Watch out! One slings a pair of dirty pants at my face and they hit me in the midst of my gaze. I peel <laughs> the dirty pants peel my face and hold them out in both palms like a page. Looking inside with a raised brow and a grin. I can see the blue biro writing within. From the children's home, these pants must have been taken. I found the Bible, my pants from when I was seven. There must be boys here just like me. Could this be, be the beginning of us finding heaven? A place where we have more than ourselves to cope where we have a home